Look what I just got. A sweet little Valentine's box. candles and little roses and candy and <clears throat> isn't that cute someone's very hopeful <laughs> that's so sweet thank you honey happy valentine's day everybody happy valentine's day scout okay i'm out here at my workbench i've got some eggshells that i've put into uh i'm not sure what this thing's called you know where you crush stuff up uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm going to crush up these eggshells. So what I basically did is I just collected them after eating them. And then I microwaved the shells for two minutes in the microwave to make sure to kill off anything. And then uh, I'm going to grind these up. I've never done this before. This is my first time ever grinding anything up like this. So... Bear with me if I'm not doing it right. I know you can use a coffee grinder for this, but I don't have a coffee grinder. And uh, my wife's not gonna want me using our uh, Nutribullet for this. So from what I know, this adds calcium to the garden. I'm gonna add this to the compost. Wow, that's a lot of work. I got a lot of uh, respect for the uh, the old timers that this is how they used to do everything before there were machines. It's a lot of work. Okay, it's going in the compost, so I'm gonna call that good enough. I mean, yes, I could go until it's a complete powder, but uh, I don't see any need to. Okay, sorry about the wind. So I'm actually over here at the compost pile. And after doing some more research, I realized that I actually need this pile to be a lot taller. So it's already starting to uh, dry out a little bit just because I realize now I didn't quite get enough moisture. Just so everybody knows, this is my very first time ever making compost like this. In fact, this is really my first time ever truly making compost. Um, just like everything else I've done in my life, I did a bunch of research and I'm diving in head first. But I realize I need to get this a lot more moist and I need this stack to be a lot taller. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to water this down real good. I'm going to open this thing up and then I'm going to move this ring over and then I'm going to repile it inside, but I'm going to tighten up the size of the ring. I'm going to shrink it down to about a three and a half or four foot circle. I'm gonna shrink it up so that it'll be almost to the top. So with the same exact material. So that's basically, that's what I'm doing. Okay, real simple. I'm just gonna open it up. I'm gonna move this over there and then I'm just gonna move the pile right on into it. Just open this thing up and move it over here. Okay, that's it. Now I just gotta scoop it in. And I'm gonna I'm gonna add water the whole time. So I definitely did not get enough moisture in this thing. And you'll see it when I start breaking this apart. So, yeah. Yep, there's just not enough moisture in there. Oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I am gonna water this pile really good before I start doing anything. This is way too dry. I don't know what I was thinking. I definitely underestimated how much water it was gonna take. 
So I've been watering this pile now for over 40 minutes and it's still bone dry in, in spots. I mean, the material was very, very dry to begin with. Okay, it's super windy now and we got like 30 mile an hour winds, so it is what it is. I've been watering this pile for like an hour, so let's see what we can do. All right, I got it done. Wow, that was a lot of work. That took over two hours. This stuff was so dry, it was hydrophobic. So at least it's done. And now it can sit for five days. Well, unfortunately, the only tarp I had was a 20 foot by 30 foot. So it's a little big. And that's folded over twice. It was a lot of work to get that on there by myself. Okay, so right here next to the driveway, I wanna demonstrate something about moisture retention and what's called deep mulching to hold moisture in the soil. This is a spot right here that normally holds a lot of moisture in the soil, okay? So let's see how much moisture is in the soil and how far down I have to go. Let's take a look at what the moisture looks like in the soil that's underneath the cinders and the cinders have been acting like deep mulch. So let me give you a quick demonstration and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've gone about four inches deep here. Well, actually I've gone about six inches deep here. So let me get some soil out and take a look at it. See, there's definitely moisture in there, okay? And let's see how it holds together. Holds together pretty decent, but it clumps apart. I mean, this would probably be called you know fairly close to ideal moisture but like i said this is also a very moist spot this is one of the last spots to dry up so 15 feet away right here this spot so this spot sits in the sunlight most of the day so first of all as soon as i clear the top layer of the cinders away i can already see that the cinders themselves are very moist okay so let me clear the cinders away and get down to the dirt. First of all, you can see I get some of this dirt up and you can clearly see there's way, way more moisture in it. I can feel it. I mean, look, it's making my hand get wet and muddy. This is way more moist of soil and it just keeps going all the way down. You know, I did a test hole the other day and it just keeps going. So look at how much moisture is held in the soil by only having a three inch layer of this stuff, okay? The last time it rained here, it's been five weeks, almost six weeks now. Actually, it's been six weeks. It's been a long time since it rained. Um, hopefully that'll just pack all back down like it's supposed to be. But look at that, look at, the soil was so wet, it's stuck to the shovel. I mean, that is, it's mud, almost mud. You know, it's just shy of having moisture ring out of it when you squeeze it. Now, it needs a lot more organic material, and there's a lot that we can do to build it, but what I'm trying to demonstrate is that just a layer of this rock makes the soil hold water, hold three or four times more water for longer. And it's just this stuff. So imagine if we use organic material. Imagine if there's like a foot thick. So we also plan on doing some aquaponics with uh, raising fish, possibly tilapia. There's a few other breeds that definitely can handle the cooler temperatures than tilapia that we will be growing. But either way, we're gonna be growing, raising, and harvesting and eating fish. When we get cats, these cats are gonna live a golden life. First of all, I will set them up 
the most deluxe set of cat houses, many of them, and perches up in the trees where they can sit above and hunt and they're going to be fed fresh fish they're going to have an endless supply of fresh healthy rodents out here to eat this is a dream life for a cat out here just like my dog my dog's living a dream life right now don't worry about us getting cats out here and the same with chickens we're gonna do what we can to keep them safe on the farm things die things get eaten and you move on so uh, for the most part the chickens are going to be for a source of eggs and for compost and manure production. We're only going to eat them when it's necessary. Basically, if one dies or gets old, and more than likely, um, my dogs are going to get a really good treat. So we have a neighbor that lives down the way who has five horses. And I have secured all of the waste from the horses. And I found out that the city of Flagstaff at the landfill has uh, endless amounts of mulch that they have ground up for free. And we can go there and get as much of it as we want. So when Aja gets back, we're gonna take my trailer and line the inside of it with a giant tarp that I have. And we're gonna go fill that sucker maybe a couple of times and bring it all back here because every single bit of it will get put to use. I mean, let's get real, this is compost. 